this is the second uh, video continuing on in John 6. Uh, if you didn't see video number uh, 10 previous to this, then you need to get that video just so you're in tune with what we're doing here. We're in the middle of John 6, um, the, in chapter 6 of John, and we're looking at how this thing of, uh, there's some scriptures here that are very uh, taken out of context and used to talk about God uh, being the one and only by Him can anyone come to Him. It has nothing to do with free will. And I think if we look at this, as we look at this in the context, we see, we're going to see that, that we do a disservice to Scripture and to God's truth when we take those texts out of context and don't teach the whole Word of God, the whole thing that's in this chapter. And we're in verse 27 where Jesus is really drawing these peoples out. If you wish, he's setting a trap for them. But he's setting, uh, he's actually setting up a decision for them. Do not work for the food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Now, I would just stop there and say, is he not appealing to their, to reason about this? Is he not appealing to them to make a decision? So that is an important part of what Jesus understood had to happen. And again, he's not afraid, even though he talks about this work we're going to see defined ahead is, is believing, but he has no problem calling it work. God... God is not hung up on a term. He sees our hearts. He knows what's going on in our hearts. So he says, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they ask him, What must we do to do the work or the works God requires? Now, one take on this could be say, Hey, they're still under the law, and you know, so it's legitimate for Jesus to talk to them about working here. But as we see the passage, he's leading and talking about believing. He's le he's a whole, uh, everything he's asking them to do is to go to believing. If we saw this question, normally we would have to say that question is out of place. What mu must we do to do the works God requires? But we have to remember this question is being put as asking for clarification of what Jesus said, don't work for the food that spoils, but work for the food that... Uh, let me get this, that endures for eternal life. So, so they ask him them question, and then Jesus' answer. But again, he set this whole thing up. We're not going off tangent here from something that they're asking about, but he asked a question leading them into this, and he says the work of God is this. They're saying what works must we do to do what God requires? And he says the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So let me say, dear brothers and sisters, if we just stop and pause at this. Now, we're going to, I realize there's more text in the passage, and we may even go into a third 10-minute uh, video on this. But Jesus is saying there's a work for you to do. He asked them to do that work, and they said, what is that work? And he says, the work is to believe. So unless I'm reading wrong here, Jesus is saying to them, you have something that you have to do, and what you have to do is believe. And everything else in the passage has to go in accord with this. I'm not going to try and throw out any of the verses of this passage or say that any of the verses in this passage are more important than others. But they have to go together. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent him. Now they go back into old carnal mode here. You know, they say, how? We can get another sandwich out of this. So they ask him, what miraculous signs... Uh, what, I'm sorry, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe what you, what will you do, believe you, what will you do? So again, they're still going back to the sandwich attitude here. And he says, our forefathers, and they give him an example, kind of tempting him, if they would, or leading, trying to lead him on. And of course, he's the one that's leading and, and, and leads in this as he's the sovereign God dealing with him. But they lead him on saying, our forefathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And uh, Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven. It is my Father who gives you the true bread for heaven. And so Jesus just clarifies here. They're kind of thinking, well, maybe you're like Moses, a, a great leader, and you're going to feed us. Moses fed those people with manna. That was great. They didn't have to work. You know, we wouldn't mind having some of that. And uh, Jesus clarifies. And he says, no, you know what? It wasn't Moses that gave you that bread from heaven. It was the Father. It was God who gave you true bread from heaven. And so then he leads. It goes back to what he wants to talk to them about. 
So we see God dealing with carnal people who maybe don't have an interest or don't have an interest in spiritual things, in true spiritual things, and he comes to them and he begins to do a work in them so that out of them some might believe. This is what the gospel is about. It's not about the extremes that we would take uh, saying, oh, it's only God or it's only man. No, it's, it's, it, the two things work together again. And if we're going to take this passage as a whole, I think we'll get it real clear. And so he goes on in verse 33 and he says, For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So Jesus here refers to himself and he says, The bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And so they say, hey, well, you know, we're again, there, if you wish... And, and this is one of the things, obviously, that God has to work on us for work on for people to come to Him. They're kind of talking on parallel lines. Jesus is talking about spiritual things, and they're still in the sandwich mode. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. So again, they're thinking, you know, this is lunch. Um, although I, I assume some are beginning to scratch their head and say, well, this is a weird way to talk about lunch. But anyway, God, Jesus is doing the work in them. Then it says, G then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never go thirsty. But as I have told you, and then this is, this is his rebuke or reproach to, him, uh, to them, as I have told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. So, so Jesus is saying, I'm giving you the evidence, I'm showing you what's going on. He had fed them miraculously, and he says, you still don't believe. And then here's one of our verses, and he says that, 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 that talks about the other side. And, and Jesus is saying there's more going on here. Let's just read the verse in verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. So here we see that Jesus is sharing with them, you know what, this is a work of God. It's a sovereign work of God. All that the Father gives to me. The Father is working in hearts, and there's people that he's going to give to Jesus, okay? The Father is working, and the Father's going to select these people, and he's going to give them to Jesus. But look what the verse says. All that the Father gives me will come to me. So who does the coming? Those that the Father gives to me. The Father does the work, and then there's a thing where they say, coming, I'll put this foot in front of the other one, and that foot in front of the other one, and I will come to him. And, and then also the promise, even though this is by the sovereignty and the will of God, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. So there's kind of, we can apply a reverse logic to this or a reverse understanding to the scripture more than logic. We're just going on the words of scripture. And it says, whoever comes to me, I'm never going to drive away. If you're coming to me, it's because God has drawn me. We don't have to trip over who did God give to the son. If you're coming... He says, I'm not going to throw, cast you away. God is calling you. But let's continue with this because he goes on. And again, there's both sides. There's what God's doing and there's what Jesus calling them to do in, in, in their own uh, free will, in their own power to understand, which we've talked about being an element of free will and to make choices and to act on those choices. And then, of course, they receive the consequences from God. And all of this while God, because God is working in their lives for sure, uh, verse 38 says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. So Jesus says, you know, God is sovereign. God has sent me to do his will. I've come down not to do my will. I'm in obedience as the Son, and I'm going to do God's will. What is God's will? In verse 39 he says, And this is the will of him who sent me, that, I'll, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. This is interesting because we see uh, God's work in, uh, we, we see mention here the ones that God has given me, and he says, but that I would, uh, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. So here we can see God's sovereign working in our lives. There's, it seems to be that there's one point where the Father gives and uh, his power and his sovereign power uh, predestines, he foreknows, and he gives these people to the Son. And then Jesus says, but then I have a work, or the will of God, is that I shall lose none of them that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. Um, again, we're going to go another 10-minute video on this, but again, hopefully you're seeing here 
God's working and he's appealing to men to believe and to act on what he is doing. I'll continue in a third video on the same, same passage.